Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Drop in the Gloves. Special episode today, Tim. We figured we had to last night melee action. So we had to cover the big New Jersey Devils, New York Rangers, my former team. Huge, huge fallout from the Rempy McDermott situation. Everybody getting involved. It was a nice old Donnie Brook. But first, I want to let you know this episode is brought to you by Bet99. Bet99. Voted number one online gambling experience in Canada with same game parlays, player props, flash bets. Elevate your experience at Bet99. Today's pick JJ Paterka or Peterka or Paterka. He's got seven goals in six games for the Sabres playing on the top line. Now that Casey Middlestead's kicked the bucket. With Tage and Tuck. You know those guys, Tim? Tim Tage Tuck. I do, yeah. paterka has been killing it. Seven goals in six games, like you said. That's insane for him. It's insane in the membrane. And they play the Flyers and the Wings this weekend. Very good. Tage Thompson, Tuck, Tim are picking Paterka. So you have to be 19 plus to play, and you got to play responsibly. Available only to people in Ontario or Canada. Bet 99 is built by Canadians. Or Canadians. All right, Tim. Break it down. What's the history here? Rangers, Devils. So let's get into this. I have, I have a little time to waste. I'm very excited. Yeah, I mean, just incredible game. But to really appreciate and understand why this the game started off with a line clearing brawl was to understand the history between these two teams. Really, it goes down to two players. So quick little timeline here. February 22nd, Matt Rempe was ejected for a hit on Nathan Bastion. Uh, ejected from the game, Devils and um, Rangers back in then. And then a week or so later on March 1st, the Devils traded for Curtis McDermott. This was the head of a trade deadline. This was not like a deadline acquisition. This was something that they knew they needed on their team. And they knew they were playing the Rangers a couple more times this year. Fast forward 10 days, they play, they play each other again. McDermott wants to fight Rempe for his hit on Bastion. Rempe declines multiple times throughout the game. And then they play. Later in the game... Rempe throws another hit on Siegenthaler, immediately ejected. He gets a 10 to 5. He gets the game. He ends up being suspended for four games. McDermott said after that game, I lost a lot of respect for him tonight. And you and I talked about the fact that when they play each other next, Rempe's going to have to answer for it. He's, he got to say no the first time. You don't get to say no the second time. So uh, March 12th, Rempe was suspended four games. He, he serves his suspension. He gets healthy scratched a couple of times. Then last night, we get the announcement. Both guys are in the lineup, and then both guys started the game, which brought us to the melee that we're going to get into now. Very exciting. Big lead-up. There was also some other stuff going on with the Rangers and Devils. Some huge attempted hits by Truba and Bastion that caused a melee. There was some other stuff going on. But yeah, the, the meat of it was Rempe McDermott. McDermott was brought in specifically to deal with Matt Rempe. They needed an answer to that situation, and that was the answer. They bring in the big rig. I got a text from... Um, Jeremy Clark last night, Minnesota top team. He's like, oh, you finally mentioned me on the show? <laughs> thought I was dead to you or something like that. I'm like, then he sent me a picture. And I don't know if Rempe's or uh, McDermott's in the picture because my, Tim, my memory is so bad that I have no idea who the picture is. Well, I know one of them's Curtis Gabriel because I, I got as far away from him as possible in the picture just because he's so tough. I didn't want to catch, catch a stray. But there's some big dudes in the picture, and I don't know if one of them is McDermott or not. I'm going to have to follow up on that. But that's, that's a whole other story. Shout out to Jeremy Clark. If you're in Minnesota, go to Minnesota Top Team for training. Loved it there. Back back to the melee. You had some questions before the, the puck even dropped him. Well, Fired away. Yeah, so uh, it was announced that both players are going to be in the lineup. And I guess the question for me is like, you know, we were wondering yesterday, would they play or not? Uh, we knew McDermott would probably be, but... Rempe's been healthy scratched. What's the coach's decision-making process on this? Do, do they put him in the lineup specifically to, to fight this out? Is there, are there hockey reasons? And then does one lineup gets released before the other, right? So the coach gets to look at, is it like a home and away thing? Can you walk us through that? Yeah, so if I'm Peter Laviolette, and Rempe hasn't played a lot since being called up, coming off the suspension, he's been a healthy scratch. The Rangers have been playing fairly well. I want him in the lineup because the Devils are looking for revenge. Right. They're they're out for blood. And who is my one guy that can calm it all down? It's Rempe. You go out there, you sacrifice him, sacrificial lamb, and you let him fight it out. Then you can move on with the game. So Laviolette has to deal with that call. And I think he made the right call. You play the kid. You just get it out of the way. It was like when Claude Lemieux buried Draper from behind. Claude Lemieux went out there. He just took his beating by Darren McCarty. 
It's just that's how it should go. That's old school. That's called the code. You take your beating when it's due. Mark Savard, the Cook situation. Cook went out, took the beating. That's the code. That's what you're supposed to do. And Rempe knew he was in for a fight, and he went out, and he lined up first, you know, first shift. Good for him. Back to the coaching situation. And th- this is the part that I was confused about. Green submits his lineup first. Travis Green for the New Jersey Devils. He's the visiting team. He submits it to the referees. The referees show it to the New York Rangers. The New York Rangers, in turn, then submit their starting lineup. It's all done before the game. So Peter Laviolette sees the starting lineup for the New Jersey Devils. Their fourth line, by the way, isn't very tough other than Curtis McDermott. You have Chris Tierney. You have that ball kid. And then they have some defensemen. Or who was it? Was Ball the defenseman? I don't know who. Lazar was out there. Lazar, Tierney, and McDermott. Not an intimidating starting lineup. It's not like he just loaded up all his heavies because they don't have them. So he starts that line. In turn, Laviolette starts his fourth line. Rampy, Goudreau, and they got Miller and Trube on the back. And I don't know who the other guy is in the fourth line there. VC. He got into it. Jimmy VC. Jimmy VC, your favorite. Jimmy VC, uh, Massachusetts kid, right? Is he? Yeah. Anyway, so they start their lineup. And this is the part that confused me. We'll get to the fight in a second. Why were the coaches screaming at each other after the fight? I, I don't I don't understand. I want to get in touch with Panger because he was right in between the two benches. And all he kept saying, holy jumping, holy jumping, typical Panger. And I'm just like, A, why is Laviolette fired up? Why is he screaming at Travis Green? What What's the explanation there? Travis Green submits his lineup. You counteract that. You 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 put your fourth line out there. You didn't have to. You could have put your third line, your second line, your first line. That there's no rhyme or reason for why he's upset. It, it made me harken back to when I was in New York, Tim. When the first brawl happened between the Devils and the Rangers, not a lot of people know this. I was on the Rangers. I was in the press box. I was watching that brawl happen, and I'm sitting there going, in my head, you know, I'm an egotistical little punk. I'm like. Toughest guy in the arena is right here in the press box. I could have been down there beating the doors off Cam Jansen, Eric Bolton, Carter, all those guys. But Tortorella decided to bench me for some dumb reason. He starts Stu Bickle and Rupp and Prust, who are all tough. Don't get me wrong. But when you have Mike Tyson sitting up in the press box, like put him on the ice, baby. I could have tipped the scales in our favor even more so because poor Prusty lined up with Eric Bolton. It's a it's a mismatch. It's, I've ever seen one. And then Rupper took Jansen, and then Stu Bickle and Carter had the best fight out of any for everybody. But anyways, that that's that's a long time ago. We're going back to this one. So the coaches are yelling. I don't understand it. Let's get to the fights. What did you think of the fights? Because everybody was looking at the main event, McDermott Rempe. I didn't even expect everybody else to jump in on it. So before the game, there must have been some conversations on the New Jersey side, saying, you know what, <clears throat> we're all gone. Let's let's just do it because Lazar jumps right away. McDermott backs off, and then you saw Dahl and Gaudreau go at it, and then Tierney and Marino are sitting there like kind of have to fight, but we never fight ever. I play with Chris Tierney; he couldn't fight his way out of a wet paper bag. And Johnny Marino is not a fighter either. And they look across the way and like Truba and Keandre Miller. Like, are you nuts? Those guys are tough dudes, and you're just sitting there like. <sighs> Damn it. Okay. Like they skate over there and just get their doors beat off. Miller laid a beating on Marino. Like it, that was one of the parts you caught and it was like, oof, I don't want to be Johnny Miller or what's his name? Marino in this, this uh, moment. But what did you think of the fights, Tim? We'll start with the main event, Rempy McDermott. Yeah. And, and, you know, just talking about the, the, the lineups there, because, you know, when we had Brian McGratton on talking about the famous brawl between the Flames and the Canucks, you know, again, 10 years ago, they had decided beforehand, like, who's lining up with who. And I think they even had a defenseman on the wing to line up with somebody because they specifically yeah. wanted certain matchups and stuff. And I assume that, like, when, when both teams know the lineups and who's starting, like, you, you know, something's about to happen. You know, it goes beyond just Rempe and McDermott. Like, they're all, they're all picking their fights. Um, and I thought it was interesting how was it Lazar and VC that fought each other? Like they go right off the drop of a hat. And they're the reason that they didn't get um ejected from the game because technically they were clocked as the first fight. Um and the others all kind of backed off and squared off and all that. Um it was a great s- shot of Rempe and McDermott, both like taking some melon salts, talking to their bands, like getting ready. And then as the puck is about to be dropped, they lean into each other and they're chattering. And it's not just a word, like they're having a brief conversation. Yeah. 
what is that? Is that where they decide like whether they square up or jump or what's what's happening in that moment? I honestly think Rempy's just saying sorry. That that's not not sorry, but he's like, you know, I, I, maybe I should have went your last game. I, I think that's what they're talking about because they both squared up. That's that's how they fight. No one really jumps for their style. They're bigger guys, but uh, you know, I, I honestly think that's what they were talking about. I think Rempy really said, "Hey, man, you know." Let's get this out of the way. I should have fought you last game. You know, good luck. Something like that. I, I don't think they're talking about the strategy of how to start the fight because that was strange too. I saw that. I never wanted to talk to somebody before a fight. I was just like so locked in on how to start the fight and like get myself going. I, I couldn't imagine sitting there like just having a casual conversation. But I, I guess they did. And so the puck drops and everybody starts fighting. And like you mentioned, Lazar and v- vc go at it terrible fight they they stay in the game doll and Gaudreau go at it terrible fight whatever truba and tyranny go at it i didn't see anything the camera angles so far that have been released terrible absolutely terrible job you know there's going to be action why not have a full ice camera view why not have one cameraman on every single fight so we can catch the action but anyway so that's i digress we caught most of the rampy mcdermott fight it was a good fight. It was not a great fight. Going into this matchup, Curtis McDermott needed to pound Rempe into the ice. Would you agree, based on what happened with Bastion, with the other hit, with the history, with him not fighting the first time, with McDermott spouting off in the press saying, i am lost all respect for him, I expect more from the kid. He needed to pound him in the ice, right? Agreed. Yep. He didn't. So this is the crux of the issue. I've been in these situations too. Going into a game, everybody knew I was going to fight somebody. Going into Boston, the previous year, Milan Lucic had ran Ryan Miller. They brought me in to take care of that situation. Going into Boston, everybody knew I was fighting somebody. I didn't know who I was fighting. I thought it would be Lucic. I thought it might be Chara. I thought it could be Thornton. All three of them I was ready for. First shift, Thornton lines up next to me. I said, okay, here we go. I knew I needed to pound this guy into the ice. I couldn't just maybe win the fight. I couldn't just, you know, 60-40. You have to win it decisively. And that's the issue that McDermott kind of went into because it's it's a lose-lose situation for him unless you knock him out. Like I knocked out Sean Thornton. <laughs> Uh, heads up only time he's been knocked out but at the end of the day mcdermott wins the fight if you're just counting it by points he lands more punches he wins the fight but in my eyes rempy wins the war does that make sense because rempy held him held in there's 21 year old kid yeah he's bigger rempy's still a terrible fighter i need to work with this kid like just his balance his structure his hold, his everything is just, it's so out of whack. You know what he is? He's just a raw fighter, Tim, that has no structure whatsoever, no training. Oh, if I can get my hands on him, I'd hone him in. But McDermott wins the fight. Rempe wins the war. Rempe ends up coming out of that unscathed. He goes and fires up his bench. He goes back to the penalty box. He lives to fight another day. McDermott didn't do much damage. Rempe had a little cut lip. But all in all, I think Rempe comes out smelling like roses in this. He, he, he'll he be on the Rangers next year. I don't think McDermott will be on the Devils next year if all things kind of pan out. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. But I I think Rempe did okay. He stood in there. He stepped up. One thing you got to give it to this kid. He's got a set of cojones on him. He'll go in there and he'll fight when he needs to. He won't say no. He won't back down. He fought Olivier, he fought Delorier, he fought Reeves, he fought McDermott, he fought everybody when everybody was watching. And he stood in there. Good for him. I like I, I like the cut of his jibe. And everybody's giving me a hard time. Hey, you guys, you favorite Rempy. Damn right I do. I like the kid. So what? Am I not allowed to have favorites? Sue me. You know, I'm supposed to be unbiased, but I am in this just I like Rempy. I, I I like the way he carries his uh carries himself. So he lost the fight. He won the war. Rangers go on to win four to three. Suck on that one, Devils. And I like the Devils too. Everybody was coming after me, Tim. You were like, people are 
All the devil fans are upset at you. <clears throat> I, I picked them to win the Stanley Cup last year. I like the New Jersey Devils. Can I not like Rempy? Is it like you know what I mean? People are so touchy, which I like. You got to stick up for your team. So there. Yeah, I like the analogy of 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 winning the fight, losing the war, and I think it kind of fits here because McDermott definitely got the better of him in that in that fight. Uh, and there there are a couple slow mo videos, and a lot of them were filmed by fans. You know, yeah. like on their on their iPhones. It's 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 strange that we didn't get better footage of what happened last night, but. He definitely got the better of him. But to your point, like Rumpy got to do all the things that he did leading up to this and didn't have to take that bad of a beating. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. And he didn't go down and he didn't embarrass himself. He certainly didn't get knocked out, but he didn't even really like take any heavy ones. So I feel like it's he's pretty excited about that. And McDermott, mm -hmm. I think, well, and you know, on the flip side, I think McDermott can also say that he did his job. You know what I mean? Like he won yeah. the fight. He can't control what he can't control. He wasn't there for the first one. Rempy got ejected the second time. He fought him and he won. And so you kind of, there's a both sides to this thing. But um, what I want to know is like, you've been part of situations like this, not exactly these opening game line brawls, but like, you know, the Kessel thing, there are other things like it. What happened? What's the locker room like when you come back and it's the first period and you still get all your energy? I imagine the adrenaline is just through the roof and there's only like three or four guys in the room. What do you, what's those conversations like? What's the room like? No, well, they're jacked up. They're going yeah. in there high fiving. They're smiling. They're joking around. They, everybody's talking to each other of how their fight went. It's just, it's a lot of fun. It really is. I, I, I go back to the Kessel thing because we had Ryan Miller coming into the locker room. Like it was, <laughs> it was a really good time. No one knew Millsy fought, and all of a sudden we see him walking in there. He's got a big smile on his face, like Millsy, what happened? And so it, it's, it's just great. You saw the guys in the penalty box after the fight. They're joking around. They're having a good time. Players love this stuff. Like, this is stuff you dream about. You talk about it. So before the game, I guarantee you, Truba and Miller and those guys are like, Rampy, Ramps, if you go, I'm I'm going. Like, let's go. Everybody, let's, let's try to have a line brawl. Like, this is awesome. Players want to do these sorts of things because they don't happen very often. And so right. whenever there's a chance, like, let's go. Let's fight. Everybody. Everybody's fighting. And no one got hurt. No one got embarrassed. And it was just a good old-fashioned line brawl. I lie. And it'll get the most chatter all year long. Rempy Media has just put the Rangers on the map, as strange as it sounds. Like he's just changed the trajectory of their season. Like now everybody wants to see the New York Rangers. It's so funny. In Madison Square Garden, drop of the puck, five guys. Twice it's happened to him in the last 10 years. It's incredible. I'm still bitter I wasn't on the ice. Oh, man. Put me on defense, Torts. You dumb, you dumb donkey. Honest to goodness. Did you see Shesterkin skated no. up to the blue line, dropped his no. blocker, challenging uh, Kukkonen or Lykkonen, whatever the Finn was, Finn's Kockinen. name is? Yeah. Kukkonen. So imagine that. It's been incredible. Igor shesterkin has been a little salty lately. He went after Crosby this week. I saw that, yeah. Giving him the business, and he's dropping his blocker. He's Russians, Tim. You can't trust them. They're dangerous. You so, hate the Russians, um, though. So all of this happens, and you know, there's a hundred. I think at this point, like 134 penalty minutes were, were given out yep. for this brawl, and it's two seconds into the game, and you think this is kind of this could be a long night, this could get out of hand, and then you know, fast forward about four minutes, I think it was about 15:30 in the second in the first period, uh, there's another incident where Cooley on the Rangers throws a hit from behind on Smith, uh, pretty dangerous hit, although Smith you know came up okay. And Dawson Mercer's right on him, makes him pay for it. They fight pretty good little scrap for, for being small guys or guys that don't typically fight. And, uh, you know, there's, there's some passion and energy there. And then I think at that point, the refs did a good job of pre preventing this game from getting out of hand because it could have. Because at this point, you're at like 150 penalty minutes. And at one point, there were a combined 10 guys either thrown out or in the box. The benches were super short. They, they show like Brandon Smith played like, double his his average last night because of just the, how short their bench was with Truba and Miller and all that. Yeah, Luke um, Hughes played 32 minutes. Yeah. Almost 33 minutes in the back end. It's amazing. So, like, th those guys played an incredible amount of minutes. And, well, look at the Rangers. You lose your top 2D men. You lose Truba and Miller for the whole game. And then you're forcing a guy like Gustafson and Schneider who barely played 12, 13 minutes a game, and they each played a half an hour. So it's 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 crazy that those four guys, poor Adam Fox, literally played a half an hour. 
So it's it's pretty neat what happens from that whole situation. But it's great, Tim. It's hockey. And it, the only other game where I can remember something happening like this was um, the Philadelphia-Ottawa Senators game. Where that evolved into just brawl after brawl and fight after fight. <clears throat> there was Spezza. There was Sharp. There was Alfredson. Like, everybody just kept fighting. I, people just uh, don't have the horses these, this, these days. You know what I that mean? That Bruins and Stars game from, like, 2009. Was, that was, was close, too. Odd. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was, that was fun. But who was going to fight for the Rangers? You, like, Zabinijad, Panarin, Trochik, Lafreniere, Roslevic, Kapokako. Like, those guys... Those guys aren't tough. They, it'll never happen again. This was fun. This was a rarity. I, I enjoyed it. So let me ask you this then. It sounds like you've already said the answer, but is the situation handled now between these two teams? Mm-hmm. Does this carry over to next year, or do you feel like it's been addressed? It's been addressed. It will, it will not carry over. Yeah, un- unfortunately. But it does <laughs> spark rivalries, right? Because, And I don't always want to make it about me, but I... I I kind of have to because after that Kessel thing, it did carry over from year to year because you grow that hatred. And and because you're in so many battles, like and things happen during that that year where it's like, okay, you know, Colt Nor gets involved with Coletta, and then all of a sudden you got Fraser McLaren going after a D-man, and then it's just everybody gets involved and you build that hatred. The same can go for Chicago and Vancouver and Boston and Dallas. So it takes a, a few years for it to whittle out and those players to go away. So it will carry over a little bit, especially if the same characters are still around next year, which I hope they are. But yeah, it's uh, New Jersey, New York. It's an all time, all time rivalry. Remember, I, I went after Cam Jansen when I was with the Rangers. No one would fight me. <laughs> I, I had yeah. to, I had to go and hit Brodeur. <clears throat> That's what happened because I asked Bolton and I asked Jansen and no one would fight. And I'm like, come on, you guys. Like, they were up by two, and I was, I had just gotten bag skated, so I didn't want to be there. I was like a last minute addition. And so I went and ran into Brodor. I'm like, screw it. And I, so I pushed him. And then Jansen's like, Johnny, what are you doing? I'm like, gotta fight me. <laughs> so we fought right in front of Brodor. Is that a really video? Fun. I don't think I've seen that. It was a terrible fight. I but was the Brodor part? I don't know. Maybe before the fight, I go in and give him a bump and a push, and then Jansen grabs me. Yeah, but um, it was I got bag skated that morning. I didn't think I was playing, and all of a sudden, someone I don't know what happened. Someone got hurt or got sick, and I just got thrown in. My legs were just. You've heard of bag skates? Imagine a John Tortorella bag skate. <clears throat> it's terrible. Yeah. And Sullivan, who is the coach of Pittsburgh now, who's also a hard hard ASS, was the assistant coach. So I had Sully and Torts screaming at me. Let's go! And I'm like. Yeah not playing you guys like leave me alone (laughs) there's funny stuff but yeah anyways good for good for the league good for the rivalry tim good for our podcast it was it was a heck of a game i watched the whole thing um i stayed up for the the rest of the game just because i was invested at that point and Mm -hmm. just a great comeback from the rangers obviously a huge night in madison square garden lafreniere had a couple points he's looking really good and then chris Kreider wins it with a power play with just a few minutes left and uh that put him over four to three um, More than officially, like, not not night. officially, but just puts the the final nail in the devil's casket. If there was any chance of them making it, it's completely gone now. They they are imploding. The day before, they're playing Pittsburgh, and Timo Myers yelling at Hirscher. This team, this team, something needs to happen. That's why you never like why why would you name your captain Nico Hirscher? Hirscher, 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 Hirschi. Yeah, terrible terrible decision by the New Jersey Devils to name him captain. I don't like it. Teams should consult me for when they're naming their captain. First question, how tall is he? Right. Yeah, give me their stats. And by stats, I mean how tall they are. Just yeah. height. That, that, that's all I need. And then where they're from. Nationality. Because where, where's Heischer from? He's uh, Swiss, I think. How the, how the hell? Let me look that up. Is a Swiss guy going to be a good captain? You tell me. And I, I really am just breaking down the European Union right now. I've already lost Poland. Now we're, now we're losing <laughs> Switzerland. But look, give me a break. Like, it's yeah, just not going not, not to happen. Those Swiss guys are so vanilla. Don't want to insult anybody. Just stay neutral. Ooh, He's neutral. I'm Swiss. Yeah. Got to have a strong personality. Able to lay down the law. Nico Hersher is doing that. I don't think so. 
Anyway, so that's a whole other podcast, Tim, that I, I don't want to get into. Tim wanted to keep this a tight 20. Now we're, we're rolling into 25, so we got to go, everybody. I want to talk about the Reeves fight. I want to talk about the JT Miller fight. I want to talk about so much other stuff, but we got to save it for tomorrow. And we will. So thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us on this special episode, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll be back tomorrow. Four episodes this week. Are you kidding me? Unbelievable. Matt Rempe, thank you very much. All right, everybody. Talk to you tomorrow. Cheers. Thanks for listening to Dropping the Gloves with John Scott, a member of the Nation Network of Podcasts. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts from to never miss an episode.